In this video, we will explore the different types of GPU rendering, and how workload pipelining is handled in each approach. When we talk about GPU architecture, we are really talking about the macro scale design of the GPU, and how the rendering pipeline is exposed to the application and the drivers. The deep level of abstraction provided by the high-level rendering APIs means there are some quite different approaches to this linkage on the market today. The core components in any architecture are the two processing stages, and the output frame buffer used to store the results of pixel processing. These three must be linked together with some type of data transfer. There is some type of post-transform buffering which must contain the output of the geometry processing before handing over to pixel processing. There is some type of pixel buffering of the current frame buffer working set. Color, depth, and stencil samples needed for ZS testing, blending, and multi-sampling. Within each shader stage, we then have the programmable core which executes shader programs. GPU shader cores have a very different design to a typical CPU, tuned for very data parallel problem solving. To help visualize the behavior of different architectures, we are going to use a sample test scene consisting of two draw calls. The first is a full screen mesh of triangles, shown in blue. The second is a transparent green strip, drawn diagonally on top with alpha blending enabled. This animation shows the behavior of a traditional immediate mode renderer. Primitives are processed in the order that they are specified by the application, which means the rendering sometimes will need to backtrack to revisit part of the screen touched by an earlier primitive. Immediate mode renderers link the geometry processing and the pixel processing stages using a simple first-in, first-out buffer, also called FIFO, inside of the GPU. Geometry processing will push the triangles into this buffer, pausing if the buffer completely fills up and waiting for pixel processing to catch up. Pixel processing will fetch perimeters out of this buffer, and shade them in the perimeter stream order. The working set for pixel processing is effectively the entire frame. Any triangle read from the FIFO may touch any part of the screen. This is large, far too large to keep on chip, so it is backed up by storage in the main DRAM. This architecture trades less expensive triangles, their data is kept on chip, for more expensive pixels. Immediate mode renderers can pipeline at fine granularity. Draw calls can be processed immediately by the GPU when they are submitted, and the pixel processing can start processing as soon as the first triangle is written out into the post-transform FIFO. This fine granularity makes immediate mode renderers a little more tolerant to some of the API usage, which can cause serialization problems on other architectures. This animation shows the behavior of our traditional tile-based renderer like our Molly GPUs. The screen is split into small tiles. Each tile is fragment shaded to completion before being written to memory. Draw calls are interleaved tile by tile as needed. To make the scheme work, a tile-based renderer needs to know which perimeters contribute to each tile before fragment shading starts. Geometry processing for each render pass must therefore run to completion, with immediate state including the tile coverage information being written back to main memory, because it is too large to keep inside the GPU. Pixel processing then runs tile by tile, reading the tile list to determine which perimeters to read. Tiles are small, allowing the frame buffer working set to be kept entirely on chip. Frame buffer data for completed tiles are written back to memory, or discarded if transient and no longer required. This architecture implements two disjointed pipelines. Geometry processing forming one part which must run to completion before the second pixel processing part can start. This design trades less expensive fragments, their data is kept on chip, for more expensive triangles. The disjointed nature of the macro pipeline means that the parallelization granularity of a tile-based renderer is much coarser than an immediate mode renderer. Render passes are submitted to the driver after the last draw call. Geometry processing must then run to completion in order to build the tile list, before pixel processing can start. Pipelining still occurs, but at the granularity of render passes, not draw calls. This places stricter requirements on the application API usage to maintain parallelism. For example, Vulkan dependency management needs to care more about minimizing the scope of source and destination stages. Overly conservative dependencies may needlessly serialize geometry and pixel processing. Nearly all mobile GPUs are tile-based, so the obvious question is, why? The simple answer is, most mobile content is dominated by pixel cost. With high screen resolutions and a huge reliance on the GPU for 2D gaming and user interface acceleration. Pixel processing efficiency is critical for ensuring low power and long battery life. 
The advantages of tile-based rendering all orientate around the efficiency of the in-GPU tile memory for storing the frame buffer working set. Many common fragment operations, such as depth testing, blending, and multi-sampling, can be implemented with all intermediate bandwidth, kept inside the GPU and never hitting the external DRAM. Transient attachments, which are only needed for the duration of the render pass, can be discarded when the tile completes. This saves more DRAM bandwidth, and can reduce the physical memory requirements if the attachments are backed by Vulkan transient memory allocations. The tight temporally and spatial locality given by processing all the primitives in a tile at the same time allows for very efficient hidden surface removal, as the GPU gets good visibility of layering. Finally, advanced in-tile shading pipelines can be designed that use the tile memory as scratch memory. This allows implementations of algorithms such as deferred lighting, which would traditionally write intermediate data back to external memory before sampling it as texture data in a later pass, to be built entirely inside tile RAM, removing ground trips to memory. The disadvantage of tile-based rendering is the use of external memory for geometry exchange between vertex and fragment shading. This makes triangles proportionally more expensive than they would be in an immediate mode renderer, due to the additional memory bandwidth and storage requirement of the immediate geometry state. Techniques such as tessellation and geometry shading, which programmatically expand geometry complexity, are a better fit for immediate mode architecture, because the results of the expansion are simply written to the FIFO inside the GPU. For a tile-based renderer, that expansion will need to be stored in main memory, so those techniques are best avoided or used in limited amounts. As discussed earlier, the application must also conform to some stricter API usage rules to ensure that the coarser pipelining of render stages maintains parallelism. What we have presented here are the stereotypical pure, immediate mode and tile-based renderers. But it's worth noting that there are other design options between these two extremes with different levels of vertex to pixel cost trade-off. In the next video, we will explore general design principles underlying the programmable GPU shader course. Thank you.